All right, guys, Matt here. So today I'm going to be talking about self storage facility. So in the past, I've owned uh, residential rental homes, and it it was it was good and bad. You know, it has a lot of pros, a lot of cons, uh, but it's not for me. Um, so since then, we have uh, sold all of our residential uh, rental properties, and we are getting into commercial storage. Uh, so we're doing our first uh, storage facility at this point. Uh, we just are about to close on the property here in a couple weeks. So I'm going to bring you guys along uh, on the ride. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be both a learning experience uh, for myself, as this is something I haven't done before. Uh, but it hopefully will be a good learning experience for you. And if I make mistakes with it, you can uh, benefit benefit. Uh, by learning from those mistakes. So I'm gonna insert a couple uh, pictures here. One, the first one is going to be uh, aerial photo uh, or satellite photo of the property. It's one that looks like a triangle. Uh, it's right in the corner of these two streets. It's outlined kind of in blue, I guess, there. Um, currently it has a mobile home on it, a shed, and a earth contact home. It used to be three lots, three residential lots, uh, but now it's deeded as one because the family that owned it kind of all lived there together, uh, and the mother passed away, the daughter inherited it. Um, so yeah, so anyway, now it's uh, deeded as one lot. So if you look real close though, at the back of that property, uh, along the long side, opposite of the roads, um, great description, right? Uh, there is a, it looks like a clearing to it. Well, it is a clearing. It used to be a railroad track. Uh, back in the day, the mother of the owner, uh, they basically gave the right of way for um, the railroad to come through. So the railroad uh, used that easement, uh, and then they gave the easement to the power company. Once the railroad uh, tract was no longer used, uh, the tracks are still there. Um, I believe most of them, what has been, been pulled up, uh, but they're not in use. So anyway, the power company now has that easement. So supposedly, uh, that easement should revert back to the original owner, which is uh, the family that we're buying it from, and therefore us when we purchase it. Uh, so we're currently getting a survey. Uh, hopefully it will increase the size of the property from 0.5 to 0.8 acres. It's not a dramatic amount, but every bit counts it increases the value uh, as well. So that will hopefully be nice. Uh, the second picture uh, you'll see, I just sketched that in two seconds for you with the green marker on it. is the same picture uh, outline as the piece of property, kind of a triangle angle. Uh, the right angle is where the two streets intersect, uh, where that circle is in your bottom left corner it should be. Uh, and there's a stop sign there. So that circle doesn't represent a stop sign, however. Uh, the power company has put a concrete post in about probably two foot diameter. I am hoping it turns out to be a large street light. I'm unsure though, I haven't investigated it to make sure, um, as I know they're gonna put it up regardless. So I'm hoping it's a street light though. It'll add uh, additional lighting for our storage facility. The other circle with the two arrows on it is a uh, uh, utility pole that's currently there. I'm gonna have them add on two floodlights, two large floodlights, one pointing of those uh, in each direction uh, to keep the lot well lit. Uh, each of the green hashtags um, it's not correct the number. Um, indicate a boat, a trailer, a uh, utility trailer, a car, a vehicle, whatnot, whatever someone wants to store there. And we're estimating approximately 30 to 35 um, uh, pads to store um, property on. Uh, depending on the size, the length, the width, all those good things. So we don't know until it's completed and measured and staked out, obviously, but that's the estimation. In your bottom right-hand corner, it should be at the most narrow angle, uh, is where the entrance is going to be. 
Uh, we're going to gravel that so that people can pull off the road there so they're not stuck out in traffic. Pull up to the gate, and we're currently pricing automatic um, uh, key code uh, entrance where you pull up, you reach out the window, enter on a key code, opens up uh, automatically uh, versus a manual two door, eight foot each side, you get out combination code or a key, more likely combination, to open that up, and then you have to manually close it. Uh, one of the biggest factors in those is cost um, from our side. Uh, because it's a small storage facility, it's not going to have a huge income, um, but you know it should still do decently well. So we're, we're pricing out the fencing options, we're pricing out the uh, entry options, I'll, I'll say for the uh, key code versus manual, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, but I'm doing a quick video, I'll attach it here in just a second, uh, of a walk around of the property. It's just a general walk around. Uh, it's pouring down rain, so it's a very short one. So as soon as we uh, close on the property in a couple weeks, we're going to do uh, a whole slew of things. Um, so the first is going to be uh, getting rid of the mobile home. I have some calls out to people, and if anyone is interested in locating in the Missouri, Missouri area and wants a mobile home, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, but we're going to get rid of the mobile home, have someone uh, haul that away, and then we have a local guy that's going to do uh, demolition for us. He's going to uh, tear off the roof of the earth contact house, put it in probably two 40-foot uh, haul-off dumpsters, uh, and then knock down the cinder block earth contact house. Uh, and if the survey comes back uh, that we do in fact own that hill, uh, we may uh, in fact push those cinder blocks down the hill and load the rubbish uh, into uh, the roll-off containers. Uh, down that hill is uh, scraggly brush and woods. Um, it's, it's not able to be used for anything uh, and it is out of sight. Um, after that what we're going to do is we're going to have the trees dropped, approximately 13 or so. We're going to have those dropped uh, by a local tree company and then uh, I will cut them up uh, into more manageable sections and then advertise for free firewood. Uh, that people can come and get, you know, hopefully people can use it. Uh, I'd much rather do that than just to waste it and push it down the hill as well. Um, what we don't use after, or what we aren't able to get rid of in a few weeks, we will end up uh, putting it into the uh, woods area. That way it can uh, decompose, um, but hopefully most of it gets taken. I'd rather it, it go to use. Uh, after that, we will uh, burn out the stumps. Uh, we have 55-gallon uh, drums that we will place over them, load with wood, and then let those burn for a few days, uh, burn it down. And then our uh, demo guy will come in with a bobcat and kind of grade the ground, make it somewhat more flat, uh, tear out the remaining portion of those stumps uh, that uh, were burned. Uh, he'll grade all the grass off. Um, We'll fill in where the earth contact house was. Um, after that, we will um, cap off the well uh, so that in, any future owners of the property or us, you know, for some reason in the future want to use it again, uh, all we have to do is rehook it up uh, to a breaker box. Um, we don't have to drill a new well or put a new pump down there because it will be uh, usable. Uh, after that, we will have uh, rock delivered. Um, I believe we're using uh, two inch uh, minus or one and a half inch minus. I can't remember exactly. Um, it's a lot of it, a lot of it. But anyway, uh, we'll have the gravel delivered. Uh, our Bobcat guy will spread and grade that out. And then once we have all the bids back, bids back for the fence, we'll have the fence post put in, concrete, fence put up, uh, barbed wire put up, fence put up. Um, we'll have the floodlights put on the pole. Uh, we will have uh, advertising signs put up, um, probably just on the inside of the chain link. Um, we'll have a local uh, vinyl uh, uh, sign maker uh, do that. Uh, and then we will be open for business. So my uh, sister-in-law actually informed me about a um, uh, fee collection service, I guess you could call it. Uh, it's called Square. 
So it's an app that goes on the phone or on the computer. It's free for businesses to use, but it uh, it does charge. So there's no maintenance fees. I'll put it that way. So there's no fees to have an account. There's no fees to uh, hold money in the account, anything like that. But say someone uh, is paying a bill of $100. I believe it's 2.9%. I'll have to double check that uh, to confirm. But I can send them an invoice electronically, uh, retain a credit card on file, uh, or it can do one time. Uh, you know, it can be set up multiple ways. But the nice thing about it is you can maintain it on file as terms of the contract, uh, which will make this a lot easier to recur every month. Uh, and you can set the number of months. So if the contract is for 12 months, 18, 24, 36, whatnot, you can set that. So the invoice comes on, say, the first of every single month, automatically goes to it. Uh, they pay the bill. Uh, it goes into your account, Square account, and every Sunday, uh, I believe it's every Sunday or every Saturday, uh, that gets drafted uh, from your Square account into your uh, linked business account. Uh, there's no fee for that, but they do charge the 2.9, I believe, uh, percent as a transaction fee um, from when they pay, uh, the customer pays into uh, the Square app. Uh, but the 2.9-ish uh, is definitely a, uh, a convenience rather than waiting for checks to come from, you know, 30, 35 different people. Oh, I didn't get it. Oh, I, it was, you know, I put in the mail, it never got there, you know, the post office closed, a coronavirus hit, you know, who knows. So the convenience is definitely worth it. So we'll we'll be doing that, setting everybody up on uh, recurring schedules. We'll probably do a uh, monthly option, three months, six months, and a year with a discount uh, for those extended contracts. Um, and that's about it. You know, what I'm hoping with this is it's a fairly uh, low um, maintenance um, uh, investment. You know, whereas rental homes, there's, there's, it can be fairly low if you have a great renter uh, and a good property, or it can be high maintenance if you have a pain in the butt renter uh, or a bad property that's just, you know, falling apart and is old and needs a lot of maintenance. Um, so what I'm hoping with this is a, a, there's a lot less uh, headache with it. There will be some. Um, you know, I, I've spoken to several people who own uh, rental facilities, and there's some headaches with it, uh, but it's uh, to a lesser degree uh, with this type of investment, um, while still maintaining a lot of those uh, uh, tax benefits um, that come along with um, owning real estate. Or land in this case. Um, so anyway, I just want to give you guys a quick rundown and I'll take you along the journey uh, of creating this storage facility. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. Uh, I'll link the video, or actually I'll uh, put the video up here in just a second. But if you guys have any questions along the way, definitely let me know. Uh, if you have any tips or pointers or suggestions, let me know. And I know everybody does everything differently, um, so constructive criticism is always welcomed. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoy going along this journey of uh, opening the storage facility. Uh, you learn along the way as well as I do. Uh, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, as I always point out, definitely let me know and I'll try and get to those. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comments. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button if you would in your bottom right-hand corner, I believe. I switched it up a few times, but it should end up in your right-hand corner. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. All right, guys. So this is the property. It's right at half an acre, deeded. It's on a corner street here, you can see. This is a pretty busy intersection. So it's recorded as half an acre, um, but along this tree line back here, along here, it's a pretty quick drop off, and it goes down to a uh, major power line. You can see some of them through there. So it has a power line easement, um, and it also has uh, an old abandoned railroad uh, where that easement is now. 
So that easement and down the hill uh, was previously part of this owner's uh, property. Um, but um, it was taken over by the railroad and then given as an easement to the power company. Uh, supposedly those are supposed to revert back to the original owner uh, once that easement is completed. Um, but um, that's what we're trying to find out this time. So what I'm going to do with this property is I'm going to make it a commercial storage facility. So I'm going to bring you along on the way, like I said, uh, and post videos and updates of this. But basically what we're going to do, the mower in the shed should be disappearing by the owner. Uh, this is an earth contact house. It was the original house to the property. Um, it's going to be bulldozed uh, and the roof taken off and roll off dumpsters and the concrete pushed down the hill most likely. This mobile home will be gone. So if anybody is wanting a mobile home, let me know and we'll make you a super deal. And the shed is going to be bulldozed as well. We have 13 trees on the property, at least, uh, that will be uh, cut down because we don't want them falling on top of uh, campers and boats and cars and that type of stuff. It's just a liability. We're going to take out that uh, light pole disconnect service and put a gate at that end of the property. It's shaped kind of like a triangle, as you can somewhat see. That'll be the entrance. This light will have uh, two big floodlights, one pointing that direction and one pointing towards me. And that pole down there, you can see right in the center of the film at the top almost, will be removed as well. All these trees will be gone. Uh, we'll grade it and then put gravel down. Not going to grade it perfectly flat, doesn't need to be. Uh, but uh, I'm going to kind of grade out, grade out some of these slopes and bumps. Um, add gravel and then we'll add a fence around it. Uh, so it does have existing septic, um, which will not need to be removed for the storage facility since they are collapsed. It does have an uh, active uh, deep well though, it's over 250 feet deep, so we're going to leave that. We're going to cap it off. That way it adds value to the property and also any future owners that may want it, uh, they can uh, rehook that up. So take you for a quick walk around the property here. So you can see that in. And walk back up here. Like I said, this commercial uh, storage facility will, will be a project. It's the first, in the, first one that we've done. Um, so it will be interesting and learning experience as well. So these trees are going to be fun to take out. Like I said, 13 of them. And the city or county is putting in this. I hope it's a big street light. That way it will light up the corner of this property. Uncertain, but hopefully it is. And this entrance will no longer be here. It will be down in the corner. This tree is humongous. It's about 11 feet circumference. Doesn't look quite like it, but it definitely is we measured. So we're gonna have a uh, company come and drop the trees for us just because of liability reasons. And then we're going to cut them up into sections post uh, for free firewood. So if anybody is located in Missouri, about an hour outside of St. Louis and need some firewood. Have at it. All right, guys. 